Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Boardroom Buddies podcast. Each podcast is themed and I interview and ask questions from a specialist who's also the owner of a small business, just like us. If you're a business owner of a micro business, then I hope that this sparks your thinking, answers some questions that you may have, and that you get some tips on the subject that helps you move your business forwards. I do hope that you enjoy the podcast. I very much enjoyed recording it. Hello and welcome to this week's Boardroom Buddies podcast. And this week we are going to be talking all things copywriting and content writing. Why, you may ask? Well, over the years I've, as a business owner, I've listened and heard lots of the business marketing gurus talk about your content being so important and how important it is to have your words on your website professionally written and all that kind of thing but for me as a business owner who doesn't know very much about writing it always came up well how do I know that my content is any good I've no idea what good actually means and what and how, what difference is it going to make so this week we're going to be talking with Anna Metcalf from Cantaloupe Marketing so welcome Anna to this week's podcast and thank you for joining me my pleasure and I know that Anna is well, probably the best content copywriter I've come across mm-hmm. because you wrote the copy on my website. Thank you. <laughs> and I was absolutely amazed when you wrote those words because I looked at it and I think I said to you, oh, is that me? <laughs> <laughs> and you said, yes, it is. <laughs> so I know the difference that having your copy professionally written can actually make so I'm going to ask you a few questions and uh, I know that you'll have all the answers to this and I hope that it's really useful for uh, the listeners who are going to uh, want to know a bit more about content and how we decide or know that it that it's any good what we're writing so why is content so important um well I think the way to think about content and I think it's important to just think logically about what you're trying to achieve with content yeah because when when you meet somebody in real life let's just put it into real life you meet somebody and you have a conversation with them Mm. and you don't know them initially so by having continued interactions with them you will get to know them a little bit more and you'll decide oh yeah I like you I'd like to be my friend or whatever It's the same with businesses, but in a commercial capacity. So when somebody becomes aware of your business, that's the first thing, they need to become aware of your business. But especially in B2B, and I'm a B2B copywriter really, so that's Mm, where I sit. And that, that, that sales funnel is a lot longer. It takes longer for people to work out who you are, what your value is, what you can do for them, and whether they actually want to jump in and use you as a supplier and and when to do that when's the right time because not everybody needs you straight away so to move them through that funnel it's the same logic as meeting somebody in real life in that you're 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 trying to give them those interactions to move them along that that funnel faster so that they can the old adage know like and trust you that's, yes, that's what yes. you're trying to do but in a commercial sense right so it's really important to to think about sort of developing, to, to nurture them really, and to think about mm. helping them understand what it is you do and who you are as a person, as a business. Mm. If you're an individual solo business owner, then you know they want to know a little bit about your personality yes. as well to yeah. see if they can connect with you. Yes. Um, if you're a larger organisation, it might be the culture of your business, the ethos of your business. Mm. Okay. Yes, I've often wondered for a bigger organisation how how relationship and relating to the people comes across or can be you know put across because obviously you're dealing with a a larger entity you Um, are and there's a a number of ways you can do that because every business has a story mm. you know don't don't tell me any business doesn't have a story because it always does right yeah and and that's really important to get across Mm -hmm. 
And then there's the individual stories of the people within the business as well, and they can be yeah. valuable to, to learn, to, to you know, get to know some of the characters within the, the business as well, but all in the guise of giving them the content that they actually need to move them along that funnel. Yes, yeah. But, so there is a purpose to content. I think people think they've just got to keep chucking out noise, mm, but yeah. actually there's a purpose to it. You're, you're trying to get people to know, like, and trust you and to move them through that funnel sooner so they become more confident with the idea of yes actually I'd, I'd like to work with your business or they're more ready when they're ready when they have the need for what you're you're selling mm, yeah that they're more primed and ready because you've already mm. nurtured them through that funnel and they they're ready to trust you and work with you mm. so I know that there isn't really a formula no <laughs> for, for, for copywriting so how how do you know if you're writing copy that you're getting your story across in the right way? Well, it's important to understand what your story is first. Oh, and I, okay. think, I think a lot of people don't spend sufficient time looking at what their story is. Because what you, what you don't want to do with content is just try and tell your reader all about you. Yeah. That's okay. very dull. That's not engaging. Mm. That's not what they want to hear. So mm. it's important to make sure that you're, you're, you're giving them what they need and that your story and, and the detail about your business is, is in context of what they want to hear about and what they want to read. Mm. So it's always mm. got to be valuable and relevant to the reader. It's not just mm. you standing on the rooftop saying, look at me, look at my business, isn't it great? Because that will get you absolutely yes. nowhere in today's yeah, yeah, day and age. Yeah, yeah, I remember when I first started networking, all those years ago, I mm. thought that just rocking up at a networking meeting and shaking hands with people and telling them what I did was the only thing I needed to do. Mm. And, of course, that didn't happen. So, yeah. uh, obviously, I, I've learned that, you know, relationship, and, and you mentioned the know, like, and trust. But the, the writing uh, for your business, it's not about you, is it? It's not... Never. <laughs> <laughs> not what you're wanting to write it's what they want to hear it is yeah and the, the important thing with any type of copy and and especially with content writing is to understand your audience and it's mm. something I bang on about and it's where I start with a lot of clients is you know how well do you know your audience right. and sometimes people say, oh yeah we know them they're they're male they're you know 45 to 65 and they live in so and so and it's like no 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 how mm. well do you know your audience? Do you understand the conversation that's going on in, in their head ah, okay. right now? Yes, that's a bit different from like having a, an avatar of it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's what, what's going on in their head. What's keeping them awake at night? What's stopping them sleep? What's worrying them? Mm. What's frustrating them? What's challenging them? What emotions are they feeling right now about that? And it's all in context of whatever product or service you're offering. Mm -hmm. But what are the challenges going on? Because... What you're doing with your content and generally with copy is you're trying to meet them at that point in their conversation, mm. which is why we always talk about, you know, empathising with their pains, right. um, you know, and showing them, I get it. I know where you are. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just like having a conversation with a person. But the, the, the advantage of having a conversation with a person is like here, you're in front of me. I can see you. Yeah. And I can I can read how you're feeling and what you need to know from the, what you're, you're saying back to me. Mm -hmm. And when you're writing, you don't have that. You, mm -hmm. um, no. you know, you've got a blank piece of paper, basically. Yeah. So, but you are effectively having a conversation with one person. So it's really, really important. The, you know, I can't underestimate the importance of understanding your audience and continuing to, because you can think, OK, I know everything about them. I really understand where they're at. I know their challenges. And then six months down the line, that can change a little bit or you might find there's some fresh challenges that you weren't aware of. So it's oh, important okay. to, mm. to do that. And even just simply by um, picking off three customers and saying, right, I'm going to have 10 minute conversations with three customers that I've got. Because you can assume or you can hope to assume that your customers reflect the ideal audience you're trying to talk to. Right. So I you see. can hope that by understanding yeah. your customers better, it's one way of understanding your audience, just one way. Mm -hmm. So three customers and just having a 10 minute conversation with them, what's going on in their world? What's, what's challenging them right now? Mm -hmm. And also understanding what is the value that they believe you give them? 
not what you think you give them, but what they believe you give them. Because the see. two don't always marry up. Yes, yes. So having taking time to have those calls mm. and really understand That's your customers. That's a great idea. Yeah. Because it's a simple tool. And if you, if you did that, like let's say once a month, you mm. had three calls with customers, 10 minutes, just ask them what's going on. And, and get that insight from them. That will feed your understanding, which will make your content far more relevant. Yes, and, and, and that was one of my questions. How do you know what to write? And you've just answered it there because yeah. I hadn't thought of that, yeah. of actually having that conversation Picking to find out what's, what's yeah. the issue with them. Yeah. I mean, I pick up the phone and say, hello, how are you? But don't actually ask... What's going on in their world. Yeah, yeah. Mm. How interesting. That's brilliant. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so asking what's going on, yeah. but is there a, a kind of, you, you talked about taking people on a journey, so do you start with certain things and then kind of go through a sequence of things? Or? Um, well, you need to understand where your audience is at. Are they all in the getting to know you stage? Are they aware of you or not? Or right. are they already aware of you? Um, and are you needing to build credibility and, and, and trust mm. so that they're more likely to move towards acting on you? So it's important to, and there's a, um, there's a, a lovely marketing tool, um, ADA, Awareness, Interest, Desire, oh, yes. Action, yes. which can help you just think, okay, where, where are they at? And it's worth just sitting and thinking, you know, am I somebody that's completely unknown? Am I trying to talk to an audience that doesn't know anything about me? Or are they at the stage where they, they know about me and they know about other businesses that are similar to me and they're perhaps wondering which ones to use? So do I need to therefore give them content that helps them make that decision? You know, or further down the line, are they interested and do I need to actually just encourage them to make the next step, whatever the next step is? Mm, yeah. So that's really important. Yeah. I think... All of content, I said I'd give you a book recommendation, mm. and, and my, my logic um, sits really nicely with They Ask You, and they ask you Answer, which is uh, Marcus Sheridan. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a fantastic book, and it, it really helps to clarify how it's really important to shape your content around what they need, which is all of the questions they need answering. Mm, yes. Loads of questions yes. pre-purchase. Yes. And for a business-to-business proposition again Mm. there will be loads of questions that they'll want answering because it's normally a more complex or longer term purchase so think about that think about the comparisons they might make as well and you'll see you'll see articles written around you know why would you do this instead of this Mm. because there's often more than one way to solve a problem so why is your way better Mm -hmm. so you know think about that and educating them as well because as i say b2b can be quite complex yeah. So, for example, you know, cyber security, I write a lot about at the moment. So that's a really complex situation. Why would you have this particular solution as opposed to this particular mm-hmm. solution? Do they actually understand the different options and the pros and cons of each? So by educating them, you're informing their decision making mm. and you're, you're helping them get the information yes, they yeah. need to make that decision yeah. at that time. And, you know, also, to, you know, just to educate them on, you know, trends and things that are going on in the market that may be relevant to them. Mm. But I think there's always a sense check with any piece of content is just to, to think, OK, how is this going to help my audience? Is, mm. is this is this helpful to them? Is this interesting to them? Mm. You know, yeah. will they want to read this? So that's so what factor. Mm-hmm. Yes. Always, always, you know, check through that. Yeah. And if you think, actually, no, this is just me promoting myself <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know and it, there's no yeah. benefit to them whatsoever we've got so much content we can read these days it, yeah you know it, it doesn't wash anymore mm, yeah I think in the past I've I've been very guilty of writing posts or you know blogs and things mm. like that that have been about the stuff that I do and not actually answering those questions yeah it can be relevant to write something that you do about something that you do if it's helpful yes. to them so yeah. if it if it demonstrates mm. how you know transformation that you can achieve and it's focused very much on what they can get from it yeah so it's a case of framing it in the way yes yeah. you know it, it, they're going to yeah. look at a piece of copy and think well what's in it for me why should i read this because mm. they don't have to read it no no so make sure you give them something from it and you're only as good as your last piece of content <laughs> so the problem is if you do something that's if you send out nurturing emails, let's say, um, and you send out one that is, you know, that, that is all about you and, and not really on a par or relevant to what they need, then mm. that's what they're going to remember. 
Whereas if you continually send out stuff that's relevant, useful, helpful, when your email pops in, they're going to think, oh yeah, they, they, you know, mm, they, it's worth really reading. Useful. I'll read it. Yeah. I like theirs, and yeah. you'll you'll go on it. And we'll all know we we have we have stuff we instantly delete. Um, of course, yeah. That you get, yeah. and you think, oh no, he just spouted off to me last time, so I'm not I'm not mm. reading that. Delete. Mm, yeah, because <laughs> nobody likes to be sold to, do they? Mm. Not anymore. No. no, no, no. Can't do, do you think it's changed? Do you think uh, the way we market has changed and engaged? I think people? it. I think it has. Yeah, I mean, I did a marketing degree for uh, thirty years ago now. Really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. So um, yeah, and I, you know, the, the way marketing has changed. Yes, it's become there's far more control to the the customer now, if you like. Yes, I think mm. it used to be very much. It, it's the same principles, but there used to be far more emphasis on selling and persuasion. And I think mm. the customer has become far more educated and aware. Yeah. And maybe the development of the internet and social media has helped that. Mm. But, but now you can't do that because it won't wash. And if you get it wrong, then it can be all over social media in seconds. Yes. So you just don't want to. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, you see it's it, almost frightening. It is. Really? It is, yeah. yeah. The, the, the customer has a lot more control now. Mm. Whereas it used to be the other way round, I think. Yes. But I think it's a much better place. I think it's a more honest mm. and transparent place. Mm. And it's mm. far more about letting your customers choose what's right for them. Yeah. And giving them the information they need to help them make the right choices for them. Mm-hmm. And the more mm. information, the more you give them those, that information and, and you know, the, the point of the book, they ask you answer is that if you're the one to answer those questions for them and if you're the one to provide that guidance and help, Mm. they're more likely to trust you sooner. Yes. Because you're, you know, if you line up with your competitors and your competitors aren't taking that approach and you are, my God, you're the one to talk to because you're being so helpful and transparent and honest and giving them what they need because you've taken time to Mm. learn what they need. You know what questions they want answering. Yeah, I love that book, by the way. I it's love it. I must read it again. Yeah. I yeah. must I must keep reading it. But it is a fantastic book. It's it's a it's a weighty book, but it's mm. worth wading yeah. through because it yeah, yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah, exactly, yeah, that's what I thought. Mm. It just made so much sense. Yeah. Um yeah, for me it's it has changed from when I started the business, gosh, mm. back in two thousand and six. <laughs> so it was about selling and influencing. Yeah. And it still is about influencing, but like you say, you've got more control now, and you've, and as a small business owner, you don't have, like, a fund for, you know, this is what I'm going to spend on my marketing, you know, this year or mm, whatever. Cool. You so, you start your business because you're good at something. But there's all the other things to do in a business that you need to be able to do as a business owner, mm, mm. and of course you have to learn this. Of course you do. And it's always on a need-to-know basis. Mm. And I think that's the other thing. I think back then, there were less tools, less communication yes. tools available. Mm. When I started my own business, which initially was very much about marketing communication, because that's where I'd come from, Yeah. Um, you know, I was, I was drafting out sales letters to put in the post. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and me too. <laughs> that tool's still available today, but we have so many more tools. There wasn't mm. social media then. Mm. People didn't have a blog. Mm. People didn't have email platforms to... No. People didn't have emails. No. <laughs> no you know, no. To, to communicate with people. All these tools weren't available. So mm-hmm. I think it lends itself. And I, I do... I, I think perhaps also there was, a, there was a belief then. I think people are... Businesses, smaller businesses are far more human now. There was a fear of being an individual person in a business yes. back then. Yes. Hence, you know, a lot of the use of the royal we, we are a big business when we're not, you know. Mm. We mm. are me. Um, but I'm not going to say that. I'm going no. to make out like I'm a big yes. and it was like big must be better. Mm-hmm. And I think as we've developed as a business world, um, you know, there's a lot more smaller players out there. There's plenty of solo business owners that you know specialists in their field that run a business mm, yeah and I think that's far more acceptable and I think larger organizations are far far more comfortable in picking out somebody that's freelance or a small specialist and using them as a supplier than they were then you don't have to hide behind anything you can just no. be who you are yes. and I think that transparency and that mm. more human approach is actually what's favoured nowadays mm. all round and yeah. I think that's a really good thing mm. I think 
a while ago, it was almost frowned on if you outsourced something. Yeah. It was like all... all Perhaps actually, seen as a weakness. Right? Yes, you yeah. Don't, you don't have that skill in-house. You yeah, know? that's right. Yeah. Whereas actually it's a smart thing to do. Mm, it's like you know, larger organisations that try and write all their yeah. own copy. Is that mm. smart or not? Mm. It, it's it's not if they haven't got the skill in house. Exactly, you know, it's, it's yeah. far smarter to get yeah. the people in with the particular skills mm. and get there faster. Yeah, which is why I I would always say with for someone who's starting their business, okay, so you might not have lots to spend on a website, but if you can find a copywriter that will write your content, mm. even if you start the website page yourself, mm. you know, to have the the right words. Yeah, because it's important. It, absolutely, and I think it's also it's a case of being able to take those blinkers off because it's very mm. hard to. I mean, I find it a nightmare to write my own copy, and I do <laughs> yeah. wonder sometimes if I should swap with another copywriter yes. to do that. Yeah, because you don't necessarily know how to project. You, it takes a lot of practice to project your own voice in your copy. I mm. think. Um, and when you're starting out, a lot of people sort of lean back into a more formal way of speaking. Um, <laughs> and that can come across not. And then they're frustrated because they look and think, this copy doesn't sound like me. Mm. And a copywriter knows how to do that. They yes. know how to make that sound like you. And it, it seems like an impossible task. Mm. How can somebody possibly write something and know me as well as I do? Mm. But a copywriter doesn't have to know you as well as you do mm. yourself or your business yourself. But they just they, they have the skills to be able to to reflect your your character into your copy. Yeah. And they will also know how to pull out your value and make sure that's succinctly within your copy as well in a way yeah. that it's impossible to do yourself. Yes. Well, I think that's what you did with with mine. I hope so. It's a while ago now. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what do you do if you don't get the results, you know, from what you're writing? What, what's, I what think advice the, would the you first give? thing you have to do is you, you, you have to sit back and get back to basics and make sure, as I say, that you know your audience. Is it because you're not writing relevant stuff? So is it that you, you know, you're, you're going off on one tangent and your audience, are, you know, they're all bothered about something completely different. So mm. get back to basics, pick up the phone to some customers and just check in with yourself. Um, and also, I, I think it's important not to analyse each individual piece of copy or content that you write. OK. I think it's far better to look at a, a, a big picture, because I think if you look at social media posting, for example, um, my experience is LinkedIn because that's where I, I mm -hmm. tend to hang out. But you will have a situation you can write all sorts of posts there and some of them will really land and you'll get a lot of engagement and others will completely bomb. Mm, um, yes. And I think that's, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think people get hung up with, oh gosh, I, I, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And it's far more important to continue the momentum and to remain consistent. And the same with, mm. with blogs on your website. Keep the momentum going or with emails. You know, if you get one that doesn't quite work, acknowledge it, but appreciate there's lots of factors at play. It could be the timing. It could be the content, of course, and, you know, the relevancy of that. So have a look at that. It could be um, the timing of it, you know. Um, mm. When did you put the post out? Yeah. Um, if it's email, what time did you put the email out? Was it in the morning or the lunch time? So you can reflect on it, but don't get too hung up on... Look at the bigger picture. Mm. Overall, is my content achieving my objective? Mm. But also, I think people get impatient with content. And I think it's important to manage expectations mm. that it's not a case of, right, I'm going to put out a couple of blogs and three emails and, hey, presto, I'm going to get all these inquiries. Mm. It, it takes time, uh, you know, and I've heard someone say that, you know, LinkedIn, for example, is a 30 month mindset. Right. You, you need to keep consistently building at it for that length of time. And with social media as well, you can't just post, post, post and post. You have to engage. You have to play the algorithm. You have to mm. comment, yeah. connect, message people. You know, LinkedIn is looking at your activity, your holistic activity to decide how far it's going to promote your posts. Oh, okay. Because just because you post doesn't mean that your entire network on LinkedIn sees your post. No, no. It puts them out to a few, and then it depends how many of those mm. engage on it as to whether it puts it out to more. But the more you're involved on the platform, the more ticks you get from LinkedIn, and the more likely they will be to put your, your content out to right. further people. So there's a right. whole game mm. plan there. 
Mm. And I think with things like um, blogs, when you're posting blogs, if, if they're not working for you, then look at how you're promoting them as well. Right. Because a lot of people will post a blog up and then say, well, no one's looked at it. But mm. has any, does anybody know it's there? I, I, yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. So, you know, get that within your social marketing. You know, have you got an email list? Communicate that. Mm. Um, and, and use them in all sorts of other forms of communication. The articles I've written on my website... Some of them um, I'll refer to in proposals and this sort of thing. You know, I've written one about about pages on websites and the value oh, of them. Okay. And if, I'm, if I've got a proposal going yeah. out on web copy and I feel it would help my prospect, I put a link into that article because it helps to say, instead of making the, the, you know, the proposal huge, it gives them advice on understanding why I'm saying I that see. You know, their about page mm. should be so important and, and why mm. we're including it in the brief. Yeah. So you can use them in, in your sales pitches as well. So mm. it's see them as things you can just keep using, not just once, but, but keep mm. promoting, keep communicating and keep going back to them and, and promoting mm. them elsewhere. Mm. Okay. That's really useful in terms of, you know, going back to your customers and finding out what's relevant to them now. Yeah. Um, because I think, well, certainly I have been so guilty of, thinking in my own head well they need to know this and they need to know that and they need to know the other Mm. and writing about those and posting them and actually I should have asked them first yeah you know so and the more the more you ask the more you listen because I'll quite Mm. often write a post when um I I wrote a post recently and I wrote a, a a template to help with it because somebody said to me that and it's something that a number of clients have said to me but I've never really put two and two together and thought I need to do something about that. But when we're doing customer stories, I always ask my client to introduce me to the customer. And they say, but I don't know how to. I don't know what to write. I don't know how to email that. And it's a, it's a big problem. So people right. don't know how to contact a customer to say, can we, can we create your story, please? So I've got a template now, an email template, oh, okay. which, and I've used that in social media posts and in, in my email mm. marketing recently mm. to say, you know, this would help you. And I'm getting traction on people saying, yeah, please, I'd like that template. Yes. Because people have no idea how to ask. And they're terrified that, you know, they'll offend the customer. And actually 95% of the time, customers will say yes if they're asked in the right way. Mm. And you can create yes. great stories that then promote your business and theirs. Yes. So... Yeah. By listening and by tuning into listening to the conversations you're having with customers, with prospects as well. So when you have a sales call with a a prospect, even if nothing comes from it, even if you don't get that project or you don't get that sale, just reflect on the conversation. Is there anything you can pull out from that that would be useful for content? What questions did they ask? Mm, What were their hesitations? Were there misconceptions in there that you can put right in content? Mm, So the more you do it, the more you tune into it and, and get more from the conversations that you have with your audience, be it your customers, prospects, general audience. Brilliant. Okay. Anna, that's been absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. <laughs> really, My pleasure. Really great. I think we could carry on talking for hours. We could. Um, so <laughs> thanks for joining me in, um, in the podcast and sharing your valuable experience and for the, the book reference as well. How do people get in touch with you? The easiest way to find me is either by going on to LinkedIn and mm-hmm. finding me, Anna Metcalf. I'm Anna Metcalf, a copywriter. I think I'm forward slash Anna Metcalf. Quite simple. They can also find my website, uh-huh. which is cantaloupemarketing.co.uk. Bit of a mouthful. Cantaloupe has in the melon, so it's A-L. Right. Um, <laughs> and they can email me, Anna at cantaloupemarketing.co.uk. That's brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Anna. That's, that's been absolutely great. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. I do hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the Boardroom Buddies podcast. Do subscribe for more podcasts and it would be lovely if you shared it on your favourite podcast platform. If you have any questions or you would like to talk any more on the topic, then do connect with me on LinkedIn or email me on jax, that's J-A-X, at jackiecasey.consulting. And thanks for listening.